From the moment we landed, the difference was stark. The airfield, once busier than Gatwick, now silent. Camp Bastion's control tower, which used to handle 600 flights a day, now commanding acres of empty concrete. Construction on Camp Bastion began in 2005. It cost £50 million to build and £300 million to dismantle eight years later. At its height, there were 10,000 UK personnel here, and this was the biggest British overseas base since the Second World War. After their experience in Basra, British commanders wanted somewhere out of range of rocket attack and flat enough to build a runway. In northern Helmand, they found it at a spot once occupied by the Soviet army. Starting with just a few tents, Bastion grew into a huge military town covering an area the size of Reading. Half a million tonnes of earth and sand were moved to build the runway. When British forces left in 2014, it was handed to the Afghan army and the whole base renamed Camp Shorabak. Last April, with Helmand close to falling to the Taliban, 300 US Marines returned to urgently train the Afghan army here. They're based inside Shorabak and took me for a tour of what remains of Camp Bastion. There were actually four parts to the camp. Bastion II, where many of the troops lived and which once housed a huge dining facility, has largely gone, returned to desert. The ring road where soldiers ran each morning remains, as do the watchtowers that mark the original boundary. In Bastion I, many of the tents have survived, their UK-supplied air conditioners still attached. Here too, one of the camp's many laundries. Another factor in deciding where Bastion would go was medical. Commanders wanted battlefield casualties to be no more than an hour from an operating theatre. Bastion's hospital was considered the world's number one trauma centre. Thousands of British, American and Afghan soldiers were treated here. This is what the hospital looks like today. Its empty corridors now dark and filled with dust. Treatment rooms stripped of equipment. Only this whiteboard gives a clue to what went on here. Some other buildings have also survived. The workshops where mechanics repaired the army's fighting vehicles are still intact. Other parts of Bastion 1 are still standing but disused. As well as military infrastructure, the camp was home to shops and fast food outlets. Not far from the hospital inside Bastion Zero, I found this coffee shop, its last latte served long ago. In a corner, piles of unused British military casualty cards and battlefield dressings. Next door, another welfare facility, its customers too long gone. So the last time I was here was 2012 and back then Bastion was absolutely bustling with soldiers going out to all the various fobs. There were more than a hundred at the time. Um, there was coffee shops, there, were, uh, there was a naffy. Um, it was a really, really busy place effectively a, a, a big town but now it's really eerie and desolate there's uh, just no sign of life apart from the remnants of what uh, what was once here although infrequent the base remains a target for insurgents and at one point we had to take cover from a suspected rocket attack after eight years bastion was dismantled in less than six months everything that could be removed was shipped home what remained was scrapped as we headed back to the US Marines base, we finally found a remnant of Bastion, a blast wall dedicated to the MERT, the medical emergency response team that airlifted so many British troops from the battlefield. A reminder of the more than 450 men and women that came to this base and never returned.